I'm Dave McHugh for D3Hoops.com and Hoopsom here at Randolph-Macon where Mary Washington moves on to the Sweet 16 with a pretty commanding win against the sales. Uh, they took the lead 8-6 at about 17-30 and left in the first half and after that it was all Eagles. I, I, you know, I was surprised. I was expecting it to go down to a, a last possession. You, you know, we watched him play last night against Randolph-Macon. And, you know, going to overtime and, and playing such, such a difficult opponent last night may have taken something out of them. I, I don't want to take anything away from what we did, uh, but we were, we were really aggressive uh, defensively. And once we gained control defensively, I, I, think that, I think they were pretty shot from last night. I, th I think that there was a residual effect from last night. They came out with an interesting defensive setup, but their big guy on your point kind of dared him to shoot. Of course, he hits two threes right off the bat. Did, were you a little surprised with that scheme? Yeah, I, I, I was. I went, oh, wow. Um, yeah, I was. And, and Dom knocked down a few shots, and then if that's what you're doing and it doesn't work right off the bat, you know, you have to go to plan B and, and to go to plan B that early, sometimes it's difficult on kids to adjust real quick. But Don did a great job of knocking down shots. And, you know, what I told him is if you don't knock down shots, it really doesn't matter. We'll spread the court and let you beat him off the dribble. Yeah. So, yeah, we had two options here. We just didn't have to go to option two until later on in the game. Sure. Um, a real physical game inside. Refs seem to allow almost, almost a wrestling match inside. How much did that almost maybe play into your favor? Because you guys are a really aggressive defensive team. I don't know if it, it was to our advantage with, with our size, but we've got a scrappy bunch. Um, I, I was surprised that they allowed so much to, to, to go on, to, to be honest with you. Uh, but it allowed the ball to get loose quite a bit yeah. because of how physical it was, and we're typically quicker to the ball yeah. because of our size. So I think that, that that definitely helped us. You guys took a bit of a, of a slip there in, in February where you, you lost three in a row, Salisbury, Christopher Newport, others. You guys kind of seemed to right the ship, but at that point it almost seemed like you kind of went under the radar a little bit, especially in the mid-Atlantic region. Was that maybe a blessing in disguise for you guys? Uh, you know, our conference was so good this year I didn't look at it, and I told the kids, I didn't look at that as a negative point of the season. I mean, we had a Christopher Newport uh, team that I thought should have been ranked all year long. Uh, that's what I thought. You had Salisbury, who was playing the best, probably, in our conference at that time. So that loss, I, I didn't think, was a real bad one. And Wesley was one of the top 10 teams in the country. Yeah. So those three losses, it gave us a chance, uh, I think, to reevaluate how hard we work. Uh, not that we weren't working hard, but I, th I, I think what it did was it drove the point home to the guys that we have to come ready to play and we have to play as close to our potential every night to be successful. And if not, the more talented teams individually are going to beat us. You know, uh, our, our strength is our collective team. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, some of our the sum of our parts are better than the individual parts. Yeah. I, you know, that's the way that I see it. So when, when you look at us, it's one of those things where it's almost like a giggle. This is, really? You know, this is your starting lineup. This is what you do. That's what we do. You know, for, for me, it's pretty easy, though. You know, I don't have to worry about plan B. That's what we got. Yeah. That's what we got. We're not going to change. We're not going to go with our big lineup now. Yeah. We're not going to try to, you know, it's what we do. It's been a long time since Mary Washington has been in the conversation at this point in the season. Uh, the program has always been, you know, on the cusp of, of getting back to its former glory, as it were. How great is it for you as a coach to see the team kind of come back, the program come back to this point, and really be in the conversation now as one of the last 16 teams in the country? Well, we've never been at this spot, so this yeah, is all new right. to us. Um, you, you know, when we first got there, uh, I thought that, oh, wow, we've got this thing licked, and now we know the, the formula for it. But the fact of the matter is, at our school, that formula – is very difficult. We don't have control over who gets in. Admissions right. does. We're, we're very, very competitive um, academically. It doesn't reach the demographics typically that you're going to see in basketball. Um, and financial aid, I don't have control over that. So we start out a little bit cheaper than the rest and we end up more expensive in the, in the rest. Uh, so that's difficult. But my former coach, Hal Nunley, uh, I was explaining to him the troubles that we had and he said, he said son, 
it's easy to get there one time. What you now have to do is an establish, establish a program that wins year in and year out. And so we've been doing that. I mean, if you look at our records the past 10, 12 years, we've only had one losing record. So I was really trying to establish that we're going to have a winning record every year. Then you get a couple of the right guys and you know, you, you can do some magical things. And, and this year, I, anytime you have a senior laden team and they don't want to lose, you know, they don't want to play their last game. You know, some, some magical things can happen, and that's what's happening right now. You bring up Hal Nunley's name, obviously revered here at Randolph-Macon and revered in the region. I mean, what does it mean to also maybe win on this court? It, it, it's really a special place in my heart. Um, you know, I came here, when I saw the brackets come out, I was hoping to get a first round home game. Sure. Uh, and then when I saw Randolph Macon was the host, I went, that's where we're going. And the only thing I said was, I said, please, don't play them the first round. I, I you know, <laughs> let, let, let me, let me, let me meet them in a championship because you know I want us to win and I want them to win all the time. Uh, and then they didn't win last night, and I was like, you know, I, I want to take this torch forward, not just for Mary Washington, but for Coach Nunley. He, he, he's with me all the time because he's my mentor, and he, he's the only one that I got anything from. I mean, I, I, I wasn't an assistant coach anywhere. I just became a head coach so he was the one I, I, I was using his stuff and I still do. Uh, I got a tweet during our, our Hoopsville shows earlier in the week saying when can a coach be something like 25 and 6 and not brag about going to the NCAA tournament to his roommate? Well when, when his roommate happens to be a guy who played in the semifinals in the Final Four at Division One last year, tell everybody a little bit about that. Uh, Greg Marshall and I played together here uh, and, and we're very close and, and we, we, we talk not as often as, as I'd like, <laughs> uh, but he'll probably shoot me with a, uh, a text tonight yeah. saying congratulations. But, you know, he's the talk of the town. I and, know. and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm living vicariously on the Division One level through him. I, I, I get to as many games as I can. He came to the East Coast last year and played VCU. I went down there, sat behind the bench. When he went to the NIT and won that, I was up in his it, – it's great. I, I, I'm having a special year, and he's having – it's not special. It's it's it may uh, it may be something that has never happened. He wins the next game and wins one tournament game. He will do something that nobody else has ever done, yeah. which is 35 and 0 start. Yeah. So it's phenomenal for me. I you know every day <laughs> I go home. You know tomorrow my off day I'm gonna go I'm gonna be I heaped up watching the Missouri Valley Conference Championship <laughs> with him rooting for that. And I I'm not a mild manner guy. I'm, I'm yelling at the TV. I'm uh, again. It's a lot of fun for me. Back you know. to your team. You guys will take on Virginia Wesleyan in the next round. Uh, site to be officially determined later, uh, at least after we've talked. It might be determined by the time we this airs on Hoopsville. Have you even looked at Virginia Wesleyan? They're kind of a similar team in, in nature with you guys. You, you know, they've been there and done that. Yeah. Um, you know, they have experience. They have talent. They have depth. They're well coached. You know, we'll go back to the old drawing board, but the, but the fact of the matter is... We're going to do what we do, and I hope that it's good enough. The one thing that I don't worry about, and probably Coach Macedo feels the same way, my kids are going to be ready to play. Mm -hmm. And if we lose, that will be the end of that, but it won't be because we didn't leave everything out sure. there. Uh, I'm not ready. Yeah. I'm not ready, So, I, and I don't think these guys are. So I, I think that that will be a great matchup, a great matchup. Well, congratulations on the big win over to sales. Congratulations on making the Sweet 16, uh, and good luck next weekend. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely. Rod Wood from Mary Washington.